ladies and gentlemen, so we're back for the uh, second the second set of uh, pitches. Are you ready for some more pitches? Would you like to see some more big ideas? I'm sure you would. Maybe you didn't say you did, but I'm sure you're intrigued. Right. Do you know the drill? I do you know the drill as well. I'll just now invite uh, the next uh, four um, jury on stage. Already, you've uh, you met her already. Amy Cosper from Entrepreneur Magazine. She'd like to come on stage. Okay, she, she's on her way, she's on her way. Damir Sabol, Damir Sabol, if you'd like to come, come and join us. Damir gets a lot of cheers. You get a lot of cheers, my friend. Okay. Tomasz Stolfa. Tomasz Stolfa. Mr. Rockstar, Mr. Mike Butcher, would you like to come and join us once again? And Amy, when she's ready, she'll come and join us just in a moment. So once again, let's just let me go through the uh, very simple rules that we have for the uh, for the Shift uh, Challenge 2015. Again, three minutes and three minutes only. They have to to show you what they've got, to show you their big idea, what they feel, um, what they feel is is a great idea. But we'll again, we'll see and we'll hear what the, what the jury think. And again, tweeting, let us know hashtag Shift Split. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. Of, uh, of what's said and what's presented on stage. I believe Amy is on her way. Okay, Amy, come and join us. Round of applause for Amy. Sorry. We need another one. Okay, one more microphone. Bring, well, no, we need all the microphones. Bring every microphone here. <laughs> Don't need all the microphones, two microphones, I'll give you mine. Okay, so, moving on. <laughs> Our next startup is called Watley. Put your hands together for Watley. We have all the microphones. <laughs> Sir. The club. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Good morning. Three are the major needs of modern civilization. Clean water, electricity, and connectivity. Services which billions of people do not have access to. How do we approach this problem? We have designed Wadley, a machine that can deliver services to communities of up to 3,000 people. It is transported in four tracks and assembled in four days. Wadley purifies water from any source of contamination. It also desalinates ocean water without the need of filters or membranes. It uses vapor compression distillation, a well-known technology. It is run by thermal energy and powered by the sun. Wadley also generates electricity from, any, from photovoltaic panels, another well-known technology, with the possibility of recharging external devices. And what is a hub of telecommunication devices that can be connected to the internet or to other units of Wadley to create a network. We have built fully functional prototypes. We have tested them, certified them, won different awards and applied and got different patents. We're going for phase two of Horizon 2020 after winning phase one. And how do we generate our revenues? First place, by selling Wadley's to the public sector 
NGOs, hospitals, schools, and the military itself, a two trillion euro worth market. And also by customizing these machines for private corporations, for their corporate social responsibility marketing campaigns and publicity. Worldly also wants to deliver services to people who cannot pay for them. This is the reason we have designed an application that allows everyone to donate and provide people in need with clean water, electricity, and connectivity. Getting back emotional, gratifying live images of those specific moments in which people are being helped. It's a new and transparent way of donating that connects people from the first and the third world. Behind the project, a talented team, engineers in hardware, software, MBAs, marketing experts, and designers. Discovery Channel is going to film us during the next months as we build the next technological paradigm. Waltley, thank you. Very, very Tesla-esque, isn't it? Power your car from water. Um, this is a vast, massive hardware project. Normally you get people doing like, yeah, something on your wrist. wrist. Um, how, I mean, Horizon 2020 is a big European program. Uh, it's worth something like 80 million, 80 billion or something crazy? What is it again? 80 billion, I think? It's enormous. So, uh, have you, sorry, I didn't quite catch it. Did you reveal how much money you've got from Horizon 20? No, well, I just said that we went through phase one. You went through phase yeah, one? Yeah, so they approve us, they gave us, um, they give you 50,000 euros. And this is a great program from Europe where they just give you free money. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you have to actually, actually you, uh, later on you have to like buy services from them. Uh, yeah. But it's a, a it's a bait and switch. Um, you uh, uh, so how much are you raising right now? How much are you raising? Well, this is quite a big project. How much? Are you yeah, yeah, raise? it is. <laughs> it's already been like three years working on this project, and well, right now we're going for a crowdfunding campaign in June this month. And how much do you want to raise on that? We're asking for seven hundred and fifty thousand euros. And we would build our first uh, pre-industrial machine, uh, the application, and this is on one side. On the other side, we're going for phase two of Horizon 2020. They would uh, grant us with a hundred, uh, one and a half million euros. Okay, cool. So next, next question. Yeah. How much money you invested so far to, to actually build it? Build so far, there's, there's been like uh, 300, um, 300,000 euros. We have a prototype, or yeah, we have two prototypes. The one that I that I showed. They're, so the technology is proven. They're like a car of in size. The technology is already proven. We just want to scale it up because we're going for communities of three thousand people. And once you get that the seven hundred and fifty thousand euros, um, what's your what's your time frame for rolling this out? I guess as, as quick as possible. Like I mean. We, this company from, uh, campaign is really important because when you're talking to investors, like you actually want to show them what you have. So it's a way for us to start speeding things up from one side or another. We want like to get the, the investment to create. And did you deploy it in any city, place, park, whatever? Is there is there a functional prototype deployed somewhere where I can go and drink a cup of water out of yeah. it and hook yeah, up the, the Wi-Fi? Yeah, yeah, the two prototypes that you saw right now, they're in Udin in the north of. Italy because we have there the factory already waiting to create the he's a team the, the guy from the factory is a team member also so the, we built the we built the prototypes there they were tested in Spain and now they're back there under more tests and fully functional you should bring them in San Francisco there is a big drought in California right now so <laughs> we'll need water yeah, they don't we're have any water there. in America anymore you guys have eaten it all up <laughs> good job that was great Okay, there we are, Catala, there we are, Waffley. Okay, moving on to the next startup. Next startup goes by the name of Catalan Labs. Put your hands together for Catalan Labs. A very good, uh, warm afternoon to you all. I'm uh, representing Catalan Labs. Uh, 
So what are we building? We are building a health device based solution to, for the working professionals to reduce the likelihood of back pain by improving the posture. So what is the problem? 80% of the working professionals get at least once in their lifetime back pain. And for the companies, it's a $20 billion lo loss, a productivity loss. Uh, and you know the reason is, basic reason? Being in bad posture. Uh, do you think that, uh, you know, it's not just the company loses, it's yourself. Uh, you are going to be, uh, your quality of life decreases. And think about sex, it ruins it. Now what is the solution? This is the solution. A smart tech, because one third of your life is spent in office. And you are, we are making a smart tech to help you uh, maintain the posture through haptic feedback. We have a mobile app which will calculate uh, whether you are sitting in the right posture and then let you know through uh, feedback uh, you will be able to track all your details. Basically you are going to have your mom in the office. What is the market opportunity? Uh, there is an 86 billion dollar uh, spending in the medical healthcare just for back pain. And for a Fortune 1000 company, they spend around 1.3 million dollars every year for 1000 employees just for preventable ergonomic injuries. Uh, what is our market opportunity? Like we are going to be a, uh, since we are based out of India, our beachhead market is Bangalore, where there are 800,000 IT employees who would be sitting more than 6 hours, 8 hours a day. So uh, what is the value proposition to the employee? Uh, it reminds you uh, to take breaks as often as possible to reduce the stress. It helps you really give you relief exercises. Uh, it connects you to the doctors in case of emergency. And it's like a gamified motivation uh, to uh, do the work. For the company, it gives you a project risk assessment, insurance cost reduction, and in certain cases, adherence to government rules. Happier employees means happier retention. And you know, so it's socially responsible for the company uh, what's our revenue model? We are targeting the companies and with a tired pricing uh, of subscription. You can, uh, this is a representative model of uh, what we'll be uh, selling it to the companies. We have direct sales for the large and huge customers and giving, uh, you know, because it's a sales model, uh, it's a discounted quarterly or annually payments. This is a passionate team, myself and uh, the rest of them from uh, India. We are mentored by Professor uh, Francis Mould from uh, Barcelona. And if you like our pitch, what is Venus? And you know, it will help our uh, health, uh, we'll be able to do a medical research and do a pilot project. Thank you. Thank you. So, but so basically, this is a, a device which gives me an electric shock. No, it gives me, uh, it's like a cattle prod for staff. You're slumping. <laughs> Sit up straight. Um, but it bu buzzes you on the back of your neck. Yeah, yes. And you, um, it, you know, it's like the lanyard you wear, all those people who go to like offices. Who are, they? who are those people anyway? <laughs> yeah, unlike us. Who go to offices um, and when they slouch, it does bzzz. You are slouching, and then you go like that, um, and you sit up straight, and then it means you do not sue your employer for millions of dollars, uh, yes. because <laughs> your employer has. It's like you. It's like they're giving you like a, a ring around your neck. It's like a sci-fi movie, isn't it? <laughs> can you imagine? can use it if you want. Did, no, like, did, did you slouch today? Because I got a really bad zip. You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. This our employer is really bad, right? Okay. Um, so no, your employer what, actually what cares about you. Like you want to charge a dollar a month or something per employee yeah. for this thing, why don't you just sell it straight to the, go straight to the people who have back problems and they want to kind of, you know, help themselves. Why don't you sell it straight to those people? Forget about the employers because the employers don't care about the staff anyway. Uh, this is a preventive solution for the employ employees. So even before you get the back pain, we don't want you to uh, go to buy your thing after you get back pain. We want you to, uh, to you know, use it before you get the back pain itself because why do you want to uh, you know uh, have a uh, bad quality of life
So your employer is so not all these wonderful yeah, employers so nice. out there so nice to you. who care so much about their employees' back problems. Yes, I just don't believe it. Then most employers are horrible, <laughs> right? That's why we're all entrepreneurs, right? So we can be our own thing. <laughs> Let's try to change that. Hmm. Yeah. So, do you do you really believe that? I mean. If data says that, of course, but it seems to me that better chairs are also a good solution for for uh, less back pain. Or, sta right? or standing up. Or standing up, and people are, sta you know, yeah. No, I just see They're everyone demand, sitting in the right posture just by mentioning that. this, right? Just, no, just just as a question. So, <laughs> so you know, people people wear fitness trackers and things like that for about two to three months, and then they throw them in the in a drawer and never never sort of wear them again. How, how are you going to try to prevent this problem, um, you know, of, like Mike said, something buzzing him here in the back like every few minutes um, and then deciding that, you know, what, I'm going to have yeah, back pain and I don't want things to buzz me I understand, back. I understand. You can snooze it out. So if, if you like uh, hate, uh, the, uh, you know, the buzzing, you can snooze it out where it will just analyze the data and give so you the <laughs> final help. Sorry, hold on a second. So, so I slouch. Not right oh. now. <laughs> uh, sit there for five Please. minutes, and then we'll give you. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely it's definitely beneficial. I'm sure the the version this two or like, three of the product. This is like a scene right. from the office. That <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, three minutes are up. Thank you very much, Catalan Lab. We crack on, we crack on. Okay, next up, a startup known by the name of Challenge Zone. Put your hands together for Challenge Zone. How are you doing, shifters? My name is Frane, and I will guide you through our startup story. So what is a challenge zone in a nutshell? It's gamificated and socially responsible marketing platforms that allows users to challenge anyone to do anything and anywhere in the world. Everything starts with a problem. Humans are, naturally, slides right there. humans are naturally competitive, eager for new challenges, and they always want to prove themselves among f family, friends, or society. On the other hand, they want to contribute to society as individuals and as a community. And that's how the idea about Challenge Zone was born. We had created a solution that had both entertainment and social sensitivity. Challenge Zone allows users to participate in competition by creating their own challenges. So how it works? It's simple. Just create a challenge, invite friends, collect virtual points, and win real awards. We have two different business models. In B2C model, we are targeting young people from Croatia and America, age 18 to 40, with interests in gamification platforms, problem solving, competing, and social awareness. In B2B model, we are targeting SMEs from Croatia and US with interests in technical innovation, socially responsible marketing, and direct customer engagement. Uh, significant competitors on the market are Badgewell, TCY Online, QuizUp, and ChallengeU. This is how our platform looks like. On the left side, you can see a user profile. You can see on which level user is, how many points did he win, how many badges does he have, and what are the private and public challenges that he participated in. On the right side, you can see an example of one challenge. It's 100 meter swimming challenge. You can see uh, who created the challenge, who joined the challenge, or who finished the challenge. And you can also see how many time do you have left to finish your challenge. And you are obligated to upload a photo or video proof that you have successfully finished your challenge. This is our business model. We have free, premium, and sponsor users. And we also have two very important milestones. At the end of the June, we will release an MVP. And at the end of July 2015, beta version will be out. That will be a web platform. And we are planning to do also a mobile applications. This is our awesome team. So ladies first, Mariana is designer in our team. Leon is developer in our team. Nenat is co-founder and social network specialist. And last but not least, I'm a co-founder and project manager of Challenge Zone. So join us in Challenge Without Borders. Like, comment, share, tweet, suggest. We are there for you. Thank you very much. Uh, 
One question. So, how can you know how fast I, I can swim? Uh, because it, it looks like that everybody will. I, I know. I just point, point a gun at you and say swim. <laughs> <laughs> or you. Would you okay. like to try it and split? It's warm. <laughs> Then you can swim pretty fast, probably. If you, of course. If you, if you did that. But they will never know. So it's. Yeah, you can post a widow, and uh, you can, we, we can see by the ratio of widow how fast you swim. If, if there are awards, then we will have uh, uh, times that are way faster than world record here. So. Yeah, or like world champions. You could like verify on the blockchain. Maybe. <laughs> What what are those rewards? You said there, there there's real gainers to be be had here. Yeah, we will talk with the entrepreneurs and uh, SMEs from Croatia, and we are talking with them, and they would uh, give them uh, their awards. Uh, I don't know something like uh, uh, maybe in, in uh, some hotel hotels uh, hotel rooms uh, or I don't know restaurants like some coupons or discounts or free dinners. Uh, stuff like that, and you you can also you have an option to exchange your points that you have won in our gamifica gamificated platform. For example, you have 400 points, and you can exchange them by real money. So SMEs from Croatia and I don't know US, they will donate that money to noble causes such as I don't know breast ca cancer month awareness or Movember or stuff like that. So affinity marketing. And where are you right now in your development? Uh, we are. Uh, we will release it at the end of June. I, I hope. Okay. One question. You, you are very broad in terms of challenges, right? I can challenge pretty much for anything. Have yeah. you guys ever considered like uh, picking up a specific vertical of challenges, let's say swimming? With, since, since yeah, we will have different categories. So that, you can, so that you can focus more on, on having the best possible experience in that vertical. And swimming might probably not be the best, but running is one, you know, th things that people yeah, can do and be the best in the world in, the, in that single vertical and then expand. So, and, and why are you going so broad? With such a small team, very early on, instead of like just laser focusing. Yeah, we, we are doing a test period in Croatia, so that, that is a small market, and we 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 have collected a good feedback. So people are interested in this stuff, and we will try to talk with people in US and with our friends, families, and they are very thrilled with this idea. This is a new way of marketing, and socially responsible marketing. So I have some knowledge of this uh, market because I'm afraid that I get pitched this business model roughly once every three months. Um, Bragster, 2008, raised a million pounds, uh, was sold a year later because they couldn't make it work and it was, uh, had brand advertising on it. Fight Me raised about uh, £250,000 seed money right now, is raising money again, still has not raised another round. Clash, Berlin startup, raised a million dollars, uh, really went out there with a, actually quite a good mobile product. Uh, a year later, they were dead. So what do you think you're going to do to beat the fact that basically this business model does not work? Uh, and I think the, in the only, I, I think, only saving uh, grace, which frankly I hadn't thought of that, is to do it in a niche. Why all these platforms do it in this massively broad sector like, oh, you know, chuck yourself off a cliff, you know, and yeah. beat that. <laughs> like, yeah, we were talking about this know, yesterday. So. Hey, I chuck myself, I'm dead now, but anyway, um, you know, let's beat, <laughs> beat that, okay. I'll be see you in heaven. I mean, no, this business model does not work. It's tried many times. You haven't even got a mobile product. You've only got a website. What are you going to do? I mean, what, how, how are you going to be better than that? Yeah, we are reconsidering this. We were talking about this yesterday, and we will try to hit a niche, maybe a sport challenges for a start. Well, now, now, yeah, yes, yeah. now. Do it, yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, if I had any money to invest, and if I was look, looking at you guys, you know, pitching money? this, not, I have all my stock tied into one company, and I'm focused on that. Um, <laughs> So if I, if I was, you know, my recommendation here would be definitely find something that you can create a repeatable model so that people will constantly be challenged and be challenging themselves. You're going to have a, a niche. Like you're going to have people that are very passionate about that. Let's say if you focus on running, you're going to have people that are focused about running. I've got business model. And, you know, people spend a lot of money on running shoes and running shorts and running shirts, and then you have a business model. I've like, got a business model. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise, you will die trying because you're going to be spread so thin across totally. the board. And they're going to be two people swimming, two people playing poker, three people running, and so on. And yeah, we will have categories. Will we will have categories I like sports, traveling, and stuff you like that. You should rename it Sprint Me. 
sprint me and then beat, beat your sprint time. Shall we try Get that? Get Shall we try it on, on shift? Like hashtag sprint me? Somebody do that business. Because I think sprinting is really good for you, right? Can somebody do that? Thank you. Okay, yes. ladies and gentlemen, Thanks. challenge zone. Our next startup goes by the name of Face Wallets. Put your hands together for Face Wallets. Hello, 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 everyone. Um, I was supposed to follow this presentation, but I just don't feel like because I'm in Split. I'm from Brazil, and this is the, the perfect place to to explain our big value. So I was exactly in a place like this, in Cain, south of France, when I came out with the idea of creating a face recognition mobile payment app. Why was that? I was in the beach, and I forgot my wallet inside the room, and I could expend money because the people from the hotel that work on the beach as well, they could accept me because they know I would pay after that. But at that time, I had the thought, why don't came out with the solution where anyone can pay with their faces without any kind of belongings. So actually you can be really naked without any kind of belongings. Cards, wallets, mobile phones, because these mobile phones run out of battery all the time, so it's not safe. So that's why we call our product SAFE. SAFE is face recognition, mobile authentication for mobile payments. How it works, it's really simple. It's like other uh, e-wallets on the market, but the difference is when the customer is registering, he first registers his face with face recognition, and then his payment methods and a PIN. And from the customer side, the, the benefits are there are no hardwares as old POS, no Bluetooth hardwares like these new companies, gateways or these uh, specific devices for fingerprint or biometric readers. Any kind of camera, any kind of smartphone is able to, to transact our solution. So uh, to create this, we had to come out with a proprietary technology created by Giovanni, this guy here, who is a PhD in Harvard, and he used tech techniques as machine learning and deep learning, what is the hottest thing for any kind of developing, but what made uh, the face recognition secure enough for this kind of environment. So there is some highlights here about our first uh, acquire customers that we would like to have and about our strategy and all the, the highlights of the market. It's a huge market, mobile payments. It's changing the, the payments environment as the credit card did. And my background is from investment banking. Giovanni backgrounds is from uh, academic. He, uh, he's a PhD in Harvard, as I said. And uh, that's it. We have our MVP, which shown yesterday in Pay Expo for the first time with the proprietary engine, because we had one with third-party engine first to prove the concept in Brazil with PayPal. And now we are ready to launch, just looking for partners in the, both sides. And that's safe. You, your money, your face, it's easy. I, lo I love the fact that you went off script. Like that, I, that to me is ref that's disruptive and refreshing when you break off with a templated presentation. So I love that part. Um, I do have a question. Like, where are you in your? What stage are you in right now? Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, we had a first moment in Brazil where we developed a product to prove the concept. We proved with PayPal. So uh, we noticed the product was a crab because we were using third-party engine, those face recognition old algorithms. But we proved the interesting of banking and PayPal. But for the other side as well, we need to move to London. So we pivot the company because of strategies. And now we are in London with some uh, institutions as in sponsors uh, in, inside the our office, our office of uh, start boot camping and rainmaking out loft in London. And we have the MVP then. We just need the back end of the processing to launch it as a pilot in some, some franchise or this kind of missions. Yeah, uh, so you can, do you have some 
new technology or or how can you tell me how accurate it is yeah yeah it's now it's completely new technology proprietary cre created by giovanni during his seven years of research so this engine upgraded for seven years not just the face recognition but also the anti-fraud use machine learning he, he has all the rights because he did all these technologies it's hints uh, developer so all the patent we don't need because it's on, on his right and he passed it to the company and it's really new it's the only three how accurate how accurate it it's a hundred percent comparable with with fingerprint so uh, comparable with fingerprint so it's 99.9 .9 if you compare with uh, authentication by, there are projects by Facebook by Google by Baidu doing machine learning face recognition they are way lower than 100 percent so no. how can it's not clear to me how can this be so so good no the, the standards that uh, they have Facebook and Google Giovanni worked with these guys actually the the engine that Google that Facebook's use is almost the same as us because we work for them. And the thing is, uh, with the publishing that they have now, the standards that they publish, because Facebook they publish, and Google as well, some some uh, research, some research, you know, the results of their face recognition engine. And Giovanni is better. Uh, Giovanni engine is better than that. So how how fast how fast is the is the match? Sorry, I'm investing right now. How, how fast is the f uh, matching of faces? How is this going to scale once you have more than ten faces in the in the database? So uh, now it's uh, we do the the traffic of data to do the authentication remote in Brazil uh, host, and we put some uh, seconds more to count with the with the processing time but it's 300 milliseconds yeah that's that's one okay that's one piece but like when you have let's say let's say this this really flies and you have 100 million people in the database mm -hmm. how quickly can you actually find one of those records so to scale like this we should uh, uh, restruct the, the database and our hosts so we should have more than one place to store it with uh, different uh, traffics so we can be faster and effective as all the, the payments information that we need transaction as well. Thank you, Face Wallet. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We move on. Right, next, a startup. A startup going by the name of Indino. Put your hands together for Indie. No. Hi, uh, my name is Philip and I help travelers from all around the world having a great uh, travel experience here in Split Croatia. And today I'm going to show you how anyone uh, who works in tourism can easily do the same and thereby make some extra money. And all this with our new business to business mobile app we call Indino. Uh, you probably already know that traveling is much more than just uh, laying on the beach and spending your time in a hotel. It's more about the activities you have in the destination itself. But did you know that the research says that 98% of those activities are being booked when they're traveler already arrived in a destination and they spend around 30 billion each year on those activities and my team and I we figured out that the majority of those people they ask us the people who work in tourism for advice about where to go and what to do so all of our team members are somehow involved in tourism there's uh, Domagoj who's the outdoor and adventure expert uh, Vedran who's monitoring the app development and myself uh, who is ex expertise in tourism and hospitality and currently I'm running a small hostel here in Split uh, Croatia throughout my work I bumped into the uh, same problem over and over again how do I find and arrange services and activities for my guests and get rewarded for my effort as soon as the uh, travel arrives in a destination we who work in tourism we become the main sales force for subsidiary services services like tours or restaurant bookings and with Indino the travel workforce has a tool on hand that helps them do exactly this within a few easy steps and this is how it works um, first you choose uh, from one of the four main categories to get a listing of small businesses around you uh, then you chat with the businesses to clear the details and when everything is fine you just use the booking button to confirm the reservation and uh, the best thing of all is the whole commission goes to the travel employee who made the booking on behalf of the traveler 
So we uh, plan to target two user groups. One is the often underpaid uh, travel workforce, and the second is the small and medium tourism enterprises. Uh, those enterprises contend with the same problems like big players, uh, but with fewer resources and expert personnel, no expert personnel, sorry. And um, so they have to find new ways, uh, largely through connections and relationships. And that's what IndieNo does. It creates a network. So about the monetization model, we, we plan to focus on the small and medium tourism enterprises. There will be a free and a premium uh, version of the app, also some in-app in uh, purchases. We just think it's important to keep it free for the travel workforce as their incentive is the commission they can make by using uh, the app. What have we done so far? We have boot, bootstrapped 20,000 euro. We built uh, the app. Uh, the MVP launches this month on iOS. An Android version is uh, soon to come, and we think it's the right time to introduce a new concept that we call collaborative intermediation in tourism. Thank you very much. So I get to my hotel and I go to the receptionist. Hey, I really don't know what I'm going to do now. Uh, I've booked a whole, I spent thousands of pounds, uh, dollars, uh, whatever, on uh, this holiday. And I, I just have, don't have any ideas. Can you help me out? I'm like, this, this does, does this happen very often? Don't people research their vacation now? Look up Google, whatever? Um, yeah, as, I mean, I think the people who have more money to spend in luxury ho hotels and everything, often they buy the whole package, but we have a large amount of people who stay in small places, apartments, uh, Airbnb, for example, if you're a host, you can, uh, why, if you want to make some money with uh, renting your spare room, why wouldn't you make some money by recommendations for your host? Uh, uh, let's say couch surfing, uh, that's the whole concept where people uh, go couch surfing because the, uh, the local, he will show you around and, and, and explain you a few things. In hostels, we spend most of our time recommending things, organizing things for the, for the traveler. So uh, I didn't believe it before I started with the hostel, but they really ask us all the time. I guess they're, they're tired with all these apps and overflow of information or something. So they trust us, basically. We do it a lot. But, but a lot of like, you know, a hotel or whatever, you know, they already have existing relationships with activity suppliers. Somebody does some rock climbing, there's kayaking or whatever. They already have a list of stuff because people have asked them so often. They already have a list. Why are they going to use your app? Um, yeah, maybe the, the bigger ones are more organized, but the smaller ones, uh, you know, the, it, it's hard. Google, they show, it shows you always the results of, I don't know, if you Google activities or something, the big players like Viator or someone, uh, Booking.com, you know, they pay a lot of advertisements and they don't give you the contact details on anything. Either the small businesses come to us, bring us leaflets and flyers, we prepare ourselves for the season, but then you, you always call the same people and so on. So it would be better if you have a good overview that you can choose everything on one place for, for us who work in tourism because we make a lot of money also for other small businesses uh, by organizing these things. I think it's time for us to get a piece of that. So if they have your app, will they stop asking you at a, no, I hope not, because they will ask me, I can use the app to, uh, it's not for the traveler, don't be confused with that, it's, it's for the receptionist, like for, for the people who work in tourism and the, for the small business, it connects those two and we share the customer basically. So if, I, if someone so comes... So it's marketplace of services, uh, marketplace of services for tourists that are actually, that is used by accommodation providers accommodation providers so anyone who is involved in tourism you know anyone any host basically can use it to research a little bit and contact the suppliers for activities or restaurants or something arrange it and get a small commission for for doing that and you just forward the guest what we do basically whatever what we do right now but a little sim simpler and uh, yeah and sometimes we don't get paid for what we do but this would be a chance to get some money Okay, ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. Thank you so in dinner. Thank you. The startups that just keep on coming. Next up is a startup known as Idea Four. Ladies and gentlemen, show us your appreciation for Idea Four. My name is Dino. This is my colleague Luca. We are CEO and CFO of an Idea4. The future of automotive industries are electric vehicles. Just imagine a world where you can drive your electric vehicle, where, where you could charge your electric vehicle wherever there is an electric socket. A simple plug-in. 
What stops us? But, uh, <laughs> what stops us from being able to do so today is the lack of infrastructure. Both Europe and Croatia cannot boost the sales of electric vehicles without it. The solution and the key to this problem is to optimize the infrastructure. The solution is a mobile electric vehicle charger. It's much more easier and simple to charge, to drive your electric car and charge your electric car without have to worry where the next charging station is. Our product can be sold both to users and manufacturers of an electric vehicles. We are one step of building just that. Now here is but an image of how it will look, but what we can tell you right now of its performance is as follows. A wide range of input voltage makes it easy to use. A maximum power of more than 40 kilowatts for fast charging. Small size and light weight of 30 by 20 by 10 centimeters and six and a half kilograms makes it easy to implement very high efficiency to increase the efficiency of charging. Low price, affordable to the general public. Advanced control of charging gives you a longer battery lifespan, especially when rapidly charging without damaging the battery cell's core. And an output voltage range from 12 to 1000 volts makes it possible for our charger to charge literally any electric vehicle on the market. In order to finish our prototype, to buy last parts, to test it and to implement it, we need an investment of 7,500 euros. This is our team. As you can see, there are only four of us working on what is a technologically very advanced project. We cannot do it by ourselves. We need your help because only together we can make the future happen. Thank you very much. So I, I, I really appreciate your presentation. It was very, very smooth. Um, I'm just curious, what is, what's your background? I couldn't see the, your, your bios. Are you engineers? Uh, no, two of us are economists. I'm financial and bank, banking. He is a manager. And uh, we have two of our guys are electronical engineers. And what was the, like, your aha moment where you were like, ah, the battery is the thing? Like, what, tell me about that. Uh, so actually, one of our engineers built in uh, Rijeka or helped to build in Rijeka an electric vehicle. And while working on that, he actually found a breakthrough. He thought, okay, there is a better, faster uh, charger and I can build it. Then he approached us and uh, we actually started like that. What, what makes it bigger and better and more efficient? And not bigger. Because better. it's smaller. Because it's small. <laughs> I get pitched this this idea a lot. I mean, I do. It's you know the it's the thing that people are kind of falling into because there's a big gap in the market right now. So, is the smallness your competitive advantage? Yes, it is small enough to be carried by anyone, and it is fast enough like a conventional charging station. Uh, it is even faster by our projection, projections to this day than uh, any charging station in Croatia. We still cannot compete uh, with big companies like uh, Tesla, for example, because their vehicles are just and chargers are just too optimized. But as we said before, there are only four of us. We don't have many funds, and uh, by the components that are working now, we think that we can make. And you, you have a prototype? It's almost ready. We still have to build the case, the cooling system, and some the aluminium uh, coil and so on. But the closest competitor from Switzerland, he also they also got a uh, portable charging station, and there is uh, 65 kilograms heavy. Ours six and a half kilograms. I mean, uh, I mean. It's a shame you couldn't bring it or bring, bring the prototype. Uh, we, we don't have a prototype. We, had, oh. we have a different parts a working on or, a, on or a table. Even a mock-up. Uh, you know, just, or, or a cardboard box painted to look like your, <laughs> your, uh, your device. Well, actually our idea was to come here to find some investors and then make you a prototype. You can buy you a cardboard box <laughs> and then give you some, you can also pay for the paint as well to paint it the right color of the device, yes? We believe once we have it working, everyone's want to go and invest their money in us. Yeah, but I want to see it. 
I want to know what it looks like. We will call you first. Uh, How first big thing is it? When we is it like a briefcase? What it's is it? 30 by 20 yes. by 10 centimeters. It, it, it's, as, it's as big as a briefcase. It's like a, a size briefcase? Of, it's the size of an 11-inch MacBook Air, only 10 centimeters thicker. It's the size of a what? 11-inch MacBook Air. An 11-inch MacBook Air? Yes, 30 by 20 That's centimeters. tiny. Very tiny. This is going to charge a car? Yes. Why don't I just put it in the boot? And then just charge the kick, walk around, you know, drive around with that's the thing. an idea. That, you, you, that's is, what, it, is it designed to be carried around in a car? In the car? That's what my colleague said. He said three three things. That it can be like can, the way I charge my iPhone on a spare battery. You can, you can use it as a charging station, as a home station, or you can bring it in your car and just plug it in wherever you go. Which uh, well, actually, I mean, we, if it's the size of an 11-inch MacBook Air, the, the why idea don't I just buy five. I mean, I you fill the boot with the thing. Pre-orders. Pre-orders. Are you doing a Kickstarter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when is it launching? Uh, when we gather a 7,000... 7, when you get the cardboard box, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's so little, we need more information here. I mean, now I'm actually getting excited. Like, when does the Kickstarter launch? When is, it, when is the prototype done? Uh, what are the questions? Uh, how Anyone much else? Does it cost? Huh? Price point. Price point, how much is it? Uh, the price is the difficult part because we have to include what we have in the include our our paychecks and so on and so on. But the building of a one would be around two thousand five hundred euros. So, so one one. Let's say you want one, you can get it for two and a half thousand euro. If yeah, you would you like one hundred, we can lower the price for you. <laughs> only for good. you. Can you give everybody here a discount? <laughs> Yes, we can. This is your, look, this is your first test market, right? This is your first test market. Not many people have electric cars right now, but I mean, how much, hands up, if you had an electric car, would you, would you buy it? Yeah? Put your hand up, right? Right, here's your first test market right here, right? Okay. You, you, now you, uh, uh, what's your Twitter handle? What? What's your Twitter handle? Do you have a Twitter? Uh, yes, we have Twitter, but it's uh, three, we had it for three days. I don't care. <laughs> We made it just for you. Oh, uh, I'm so happy. You just for me? Oh, sweet. You guys need um, a Kickstarter. What's the Twitter? What's the Twitter handle? Uh, Twitter handle is Idea4. Idea4. Association Idea4. Say, say it again. Association Idea4. We are association. We are not no more startup. We are already an association. I don't know what that means, but it sounds great. <laughs> association Idea4. <laughs> Is the Twitter handle right? Everybody follow it. You're now going to tweet out a discount code for all these people. Good night. See you later. <laughs> and that's Good it, ladies night. and gentlemen. Idea four. <laughs> You're such an asshole. <laughs> oh, is this thing on? <laughs> We've had six. We're going to have one more. One more. This is number seven. So the final one today of the the, uh, the challenge, the shifts challenge, 2015, is in atomic. Put your hands together for in atomic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> start now. Now. Okay. Uh, when I. I have, I have Hold the mic to your face, like what? this. Uh, when I was, <laughs> I have a cousin. Mar I have a cousin, uh, Maria. When uh, we were, <clears throat> we spent most of our childhood together. She was my best friend. After some time, we drifted apart, uh, and for some unknown, for some unknown reason, uh, she was. Uh, uh, rushed in the hospital after some time and I didn't saw her for a few, a few months. Uh, <clears throat> okay, God, God damn it. Uh, and I didn't saw her for a few months. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> you got this. <laughs> Forget all these people. Just talk to us. We're over here. Just talk to us. Tell us the story. It's okay. Just relax. I will tell you a You'll story. be fine. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, 
we drifted apart. Uh, after some time, she was rushed in a hospital, and I didn't saw, saw her for a few months. Uh, the next time I saw her, she was a missing. She was missing an arm, and I never knew why. Uh, I was uh, wondering for some time uh, why that happened. But my parents told me that that was because she ended up in a, a hospital after a terrible car accident. Uh, <clears throat> not. So, it took some time until I realized and I learned the story from my parents and cousins that uh, she lost her arm because of gangrene after she uh, injected herself with a golden, a golden shot. Uh, she was a drug, a drug addict. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, last year, in the United States alone, there were th uh, roughly three million cases of child abuse. Every 10 seconds, there is uh, at least one case of child abuse made, and for each case of child abuse that's made, two more go uh, two cases of child abuse ca child abuse never go reported. <coughs> Parents today have more, one of the most difficult, challenging jobs in their lives. They have to raise a happy and healthy child. It has become extremely difficult for them to do so in, uh, in today's world of ever-growing... Uh, uh, in today's world... Ah. <laughs> okay. So we developed the following application called Pure Horizon which tracks all the activity of your child. As you can see, Melanie, uh, Melanie, uh, mom, Melanie mom asked where she, is, where she is. She told um, her mom she is uh, at SHIP conference, but actually she was at Batschitzer Beach in Split. Uh, <coughs> so her mom uh, pinpointed her exact location and from our panel found out where, where her whereabouts. Uh, this is our team, and I would like to invite you all to, for beta testing uh, to subscribe the following address. So if you do so, you will receive a free copy of our software. Uh, so. Uh, you, so basically, uh, you're concerned about your child, and this application is installed on a, an Android, right? Yes, we, are cur we currently develop our first MVP for Android, and okay. it's an application that runs as a service in background and reports everything to the what else does it do? Panel. What else does it do apart from track the location of the phone? It can track all everything. It can extract all messages, contacts, uh, email addresses, internet traffic, <laughs> uh, contact logs. <laughs> Basically, everything you can do on your phone, uh, when you have it in your uh, hand, you can do over our app. But so, for, the first, uh, for the new prototype, we just uh, finished a few functions. When we came with the incubator, we had like 50 functions, so we had to remove it. So basically an NSA spin-off, or? <laughs> Something like that. Okay. Yeah, so the parents, stalkers, and, and the NSA. Yep. yep. Um, it's a, a good market. There's a lot of right? big market, actually. <laughs> this is a. Uh, I, I understand where you're coming from, and it's a serious subject. Um, and uh, you know, everyone wants to keep their child safe. Uh, how does it turn it? I mean, in a way, it's almost like a non-profit. I'm not even sure if it's a business. I mean, is it a, is it a business in the sense that you're going to make money out of it somehow? Or what well, do you we sell a license per device per year for each parent. So if you have you want to install it on three devices, you need to pay three for three licenses for a year. And, and the person who has the phone, can they interact with the app? Or no, it's hidden. Is it, it's is running it in the background in the, as a service. If it's killed, it restarts itself and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think you are a very dangerous man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I, um, I take that as a compliment. Is there, is there a sniper in the room? Um, it's a little red dot playing up. Um, 
Yeah. You're not the lender, actually, right? actually, it's the real business model to sell it to the other secret services that cannot afford to develop their own, just like yeah. the NSA. I mean, like, <laughs> sounds really. like it, right? Like secret services that don't have a big budget. Yeah, MI6 or... MI we have a budget. <laughs> <laughs> have you not seen James Bond? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> So you have B2C and B2B model, is it? Yes. Uh, we wanted to target parents, uh, uh, small business customers and enterprise uh, customers, but for now we just uh, uh, selected parents. But, so is it allowed at all? Uh, can you repeat? Is it allowed? Is it it's allowed, but law, uh, if, you, if you sign at our application and you write, uh, we have a disclaimer that uh, uh, shelters us from all your activity. But, but <laughs> the real, real subject is not signing any, like... No, just a digital uh, sign. In. I've got a couple of people I'd quite like to track, actually. <laughs> um, just maybe I'll up. talk to you later. Okay. And, and this only works on Android, right? Okay. Only works on Android for now. Uh, I'm a... Uh, what? It, on <laughs> it only works on Android devices. Currently, we have developed the first prototype only for Android, but we can uh, move it to other platforms. So it's not... Uh, it doesn't have all the capabilities on Windows Phone and iOS, but... Oh, well, 80% of the market is Android and, and devices. Can we, can we pay I'll you? Stay, I'll stay on iOS. Can, so. can, can, we, yeah, can we pay you not to develop it for the iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with that, put your hands together for Initomic. <laughs> the best until last. Right, that's it. We've seen today, we've seen 13 very, very different startups, each with their own big idea, had different things. Today, this afternoon, we've heard uh, facial recognition, electric cars, sockets, what to do on holiday, buzzers at the back of your neck. Okay, so that's that. I'd like you to put your hands together for our jury once again. Damir, Amy, Tomas, and Mike. We will now have a break, a break for 15 minutes back here at quarter past four. Quarter past four, back here, quarter past four.